Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in this video, we get to pull out the turkey baster. So what does a turkey baster have to do with Arduino projects? I'm going to show you in a couple of minutes. So the project that we're going to be dealing with today is we are going to be using a soil moisture sensor for an Arduino. Again, when you think about creating Arduino projects, one of the things you should think about is what are the real world applications? What are the real things people would actually care about? And one of the things really is basically determining whether this, the moisture in the soil is of the appropriate level. Think about how many people have flower gardens or herb gardens or basically you know all the people out there they've got all these wonderful potted plants and they have to replace the potted plants every month because they forget to water them or they overwater them right this is a real this is a real legitimate issue watering your plants the appropriate level is a real problem for real adults and so what this uh, this uh, soil moisture sensor does is basically it reads the resistance between the two prongs uh, so there's a positive prong and a a negative prong you put this into the soil and the current tries to go between these two prongs and it sees what the resistance there is so basically the more resistance there are is the drier the soil is the less resistance there is the wetter the soil is so we're able to take that as an analog reading so we're able to get a number output and then when once we have that number output we can make that a value of a variable and then we can put that into a, a function for all kinds of different things to happen maybe you could post to a server so if you have if you have these with Arduino Uno Wi-Fi's in multiple different gardens they can post to a server you can wake up in the morning and you can see which gardens should be watered or which gardens should not be watered uh, if you don't want to connect to a network maybe you could simply have the Arduino Uno have a, uh, a green LED or a red LED a green LED if the soil is right a red LED if the soil is bad or again we're in the Arduino we're in the Arduino world not only do we want to be notified of problems but really if the system can automatically rectify the problem that's really the good thing I mean that's really what the modern world's about so what we can also have is we can have the Arduino Uno uh, basically be able to read the value of the variable and if that value uh, is whatever it shouldn't be it could do something such as turn on a water pump to automatically water people's gardens so again imagine flower gardens imagine herb gardens imagine that type of thing you play these in there uh, you have them connected to different water pumps uh, when it gets too dry it then pumps out water into the garden and you have a great little uh, automatic irrigation system one of the great things you can do with Arduinos too is again you can have multiple sensors so you could have the uh, the soil uh, moisture sensor you can have a photovoltaic sensor basically determine uh, what the sunlight sunlight currently is and you could have a temperature sensor so one of the things you could do is you don't want to water plants in the middle of the day when it's too hot so basically you could say if the soil is dry and the temperature is below 80 degrees and it's dark then water the plants so these are the types of things that you these types of projects that you can start doing once you add in things like this little moisture sensor so with that let's go over to my little workbench to show you how to to put this little project together then i will show you the very simple code and then show you the example of how it all works in action so here are the components that we're going to need for this particular project. You will notice some non-technical components here. We need these non-technical components to be able to test this sensor and be able to see how the readings work. So I just have a little glass of water here. This is just plain normal water. And I also have a mug of potting soil. So this is just relatively a dry potting soil. So we can put the sensor into that to determine how wet it is. And then we have the turkey baster, the turkey baster. So since this is dry, Dry soil what we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, the the moisture sensor into the dry soil see what the reading is and then we're going to start adding water and see how the reading changes so those are the non like really technical components beyond that uh, this is all that is required uh, for this project so we have our soil moisture sensor here and so when you buy this this all comes as a kit you have these prongs so the prongs here depending on which ones you buy they actually don't have any brain power to them uh, basically these 
These are just prongs that you plug into the ground. And then you have the positive and negative wires uh, that you then run to this little controller unit here. So this is the brains of this particular unit. Then past that, when you take a look at the, uh, the, the module for this unit, uh, you'll have positive, so you have VCC and you have ground. Now you can plug the VCC either into five volt or into three uh, volt. You will get a different reading uh, from it depending on whether it goes into five volt or three volt. So just whatever you're gonna do for your project, just keep doing that. Because if you set a value for a variable in an if statement that should trigger, and then you change uh, the input going in, you may run into some issues there. Then past that, we have the analog output. So all the way on the right hand side, we have the analog output. So the analog output we have coming down here to A0. So with this particular type of moisture sensor, you can actually have digital output or analog output in order to read a specific number. What we're going to be using today is the analog output. And this is really all you need uh, for what we're going to be doing today. You just assemble this. Again, uh, we have it going for 5 volt, we have it going to ground, and then we have the analog uh, wire going to A0. And this is how the project is built. So let's go over and take a look at the code. So here is the code. Here is literally all the code. However many lines that is, that is all the code that we're going to be doing today. So there's no libraries or anything else. This is very simple, since basically all we're, we're doing is reading from an analog sensor. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to define the analog pin. So we're going to define a zero, and we are going to call that the soil sensor. So in order to reference A0 now, we will say soil sensor. Then we go down and we set up the environment. And all we're going to do here is we're simply going to do serial.begin at 9600. So this starts the serial monitor service so that we can actually read out uh, from the Arduino and see what the sensor readings are. Then past that, we get into the loop. And literally, all we got, all we got is three lines here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So we got int, so we're creating a variable, sensor value equals analog read, so the function analog read, soil sensor. So we're going to analog read, a zero, a zero, and then we're simply going to serial.println, the value of sensor value, then we're going to delay for 500 milliseconds or about half a second, repeat, 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 repeat. So basically all we're going to be doing for this particular project is reading the analog value uh, from that sensor pin um, and then printing it out to the serial monitor. So let me, uh, let me upload this code to the Arduino Uno and I'll show you how it works. So I've connected the Arduino Uno and I have uploaded the sketch. So now that it's powered, we can go to tools, we can go to serial monitor and we can see what the output is. So we can see that we are currently getting an output of 1023. So if we, we take a look, we have the uh, sensor right now and the sensor is not connected to anything at all. It's not in the soil, it's not in water. And so we can see the max value, the max resistance that we're going to get is 1023. Now one of the things I'm going to show you is the minimum resistance. So if the high is 1023, what I want to do, and this kind of shows you how this works, is if I connect both sides, so this is simply one wire, I'm connecting the male to one side, the male to the other, and as we can see, the value goes down to zero. So when there is no resistance at all, it's zero. When there's the max resistance, it's 1,023. So that's your high and your low. From there, one of the interesting things to see is if we take our little glass of water here and we simply put our sensor into the glass of water, we can see that the value for the sensor actually does not go down to zero. A lot of people would think if you put this in water that the, the value will go down to zero, but as you can see, it's down that 250, 240 range. So you don't actually get a zero value when you put it in the water. Then from there, what we're going to do is we're gonna take this and we're going to put it into our soil and so we can shove it all the way down into our soil and we can start to see what the value is. Now one of the things that I will tell you when you're using these sensors is it does take a few minutes, let's just say, it takes a few minutes before the number fully stabilizes. When I say a few minutes in my playing around with this, I would really say it takes about 20 minutes. I don't know exactly what's going on between the two little prongs in there, what's happening with the soil and everything else, but basically what I found in order to get a truly stable number, 
it takes about 20 minutes for everything to work out. So just realize if you're going to be using the sensor, don't think that you can simply shove it into the soil and you will get the specific number you're looking for immediately. It will take a little bit before it equalizes. So here we can see it's equalizing out to about 391. Again, it's still going up a little bit, 392. One of the things that might be useful is uh, with the serial monitor, you can do things like show timestamp. So you can start printing this out with the timestamp, and then the nice part is, what you can do is you can walk away, go have a cup of coffee, go to the bathroom, whatever else, and then you can see what the current value is. You can scroll up a little bit to see how long it's taken to get there. So this is just one of those things just to keep in mind to get a to get the the stay stable number you're really looking for. Give it about 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, but here we we've got a relatively stable number. Again, we're saying seeing that 397, 398. So once once since we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the turkey baster. I'm going to grab a little bit of water here, a little bit of water here, and then we're gonna go over and we're going to put the water into our little thing, and this will show the value go down. So as we now are watering, watering our little sensor, we can see the value has gone all the way down to like the 167, 170 mark. Again, this is one of the things, as soon as you add water, because the water's gotta percolate through the soil, plus there's some chemical reactions with the water, the whole nine yards. So just realize, when you put water in to the container, the, 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 so, the, the soil sensor will immediately start reading values, but you shouldn't take the values as being accurate, again, until I would give it about 10 minutes. That's one, to be, one thing to be thinking about if you're gonna be doing a project, like an automatic watering project. One of the things that I would say is have the sensor check uh, the value or trigger, let's say every 10 minutes or so. So that way, if the if the value is below a level, so you turn the pump on, you pump water into the plant, into the pot, and then I would have it wait 10 minutes before it determines whether or not more water should go in. Because as you can see, it takes a little bit of, uh, of time before it stabilizes. So if you just simply keep pumping water in, uh, you may run into an issue with you know the the very the, the value of the variables so on and so forth and so basically that is all there is for this particular project so what you do is you 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 t you, you take your soil uh, you plug this in um, you, you shove it in there leave it for about 10 20 minutes see what the see what the, the reading is when it's dry then put enough water in there put an amount of water in there that you think is appropriate what you think the the level the, the water level should be then again leave the sensor for about 10 20 minutes to figure out what that value is and then take those values turn it into an if else statement and then have the if else do something within your sketch again you can have it post to a server you can have it turn on an led light or again you can even have it turn on a water pipe or something like that so that's all there is to this particular project and uh, I think it's a pretty nifty, nifty, neat little uh, little sensor at the end of the day. So that's all there is to this particular project. So you have your little soil moisture sensor. Basically what this does is it's able to read the resistance. It sends, uh, sends the positive through one prong. It tries to pick the positive up through the, the ground on the other prong. Uh, if electricity can flow freely, then you get a value of zero. If the electricity cannot flow at all, you get a value of 1,023 if you're using five volt. Um, and then basically in between there is what your sensor readings for your soil will be. Again, if you're going to be using uh, these sensors, I would say the one issue, it is, it's kind of weird because it's not a digital sensor. There's no real brains or anything to it, but really and truly, you should wait about 20 minutes uh, before you really trust the reading that your sensor is giving you. Again, I don't know what's going on with the, the soil composition or the soil chemistry or anything like that. But what I found is it does take a surprising amount of time. This isn't like a lot, a, a lot of sensors. A lot of sensors... You shove the sensor in, you do something to the sensor, it automatically gives you whatever reading is giving you. This is one of those, shove it in, go grab a cup of coffee, drink your cup of coffee, come back and then see what the reading is. Um, because if you go off of the immediate readings, you'll probably run into issues going in the future. Now, one of the things that I will warn you is we used our turkey baster today. So this is one of the few times, this is one of the few times you want water anywhere near your Arduino project. But do realize when you're dealing with water, water does conduct electricity. And so if you do things like, uh, like I wasn't paying attention, 
you'll be surprised. I wasn't paying attention when I was experimenting with this. And so at one point I was shoving the sensor into the water and then I shoved the sensor too far into the water and the water actually got up into uh, into where the, the wire connectors are. And so then I started getting a lot of weird readings because the water was shorting these connections up here. And so I was getting weird readings even though it wasn't actually connected to anything. So do be careful about that with water. Um, if you're gonna use this in a real world, like a production environment, I would use something like, uh, there's something called liquid electrical tape, it was really cool. And so if I was gonna put this out in the real world, once I made all the connections, I would shellac this, I would shellac the top part, the top part with uh, liquid electrical tape. Cause again, you've got the little, you've got the little solder points on the back. You've got these wires up here. If these get wet, Remember, what the, all this is doing, all this, this sensor is doing is it's seeing what the resistance is between the two sides. Well, the two sides are here, the two sides are here, the two sides are here. So if you get a short, not just down here on the prongs, but if you get a short up here at the solder connections, or if you get a short here up on the wires, well, then you're gonna start getting readings as if there's moisture when there may not be. So if you're gonna put this out um, into the real world, again, I would use something called a liquid electrical tape. If you're just using this as an experiment, you're playing around, just make sure, keep the top of this darn thing dry. If the top of this gets wet, then you'll run into problems. Uh, there are other issues uh, people have with these particular sensors. A lot of people say that they're toy sensors because they will degrade at, at, over time. Since there's an electrical current going through the soil, uh, these sensors many times will corrode relatively quickly. What quickly actually means at the end of the day, it depends on what environment you are, you're in, you know, what the soil composition is, how wet the soil is, so on and so forth. One thing that you may think about though is if you want to try to keep the sensor, the, the sensor, um, you know, good for as long as possible is you might do something such as triggering when the sensor is actually powered up. So right now in this particular project, what we did is we powered this using the five volt, the standard five volt uh, power connector on the Arduino board. Again, we can use five volt or three volt. Well, that means this is powered up all the time. So even when it's not reading from the analog sensor, it is still powered, which means this thing is still going to be getting corroded. One of the things you might think about doing is actually using one of the digital pens to power this. So what you could do is since the digital pen can send five volt, you could turn a digital pen on in order to power this, collect the reading from whatever for whatever the reading is, and then you could turn off both the, uh, the, the reading pen and the digital pen, and therefore electricity would not be going through this all the time. If you're gonna be doing that type of thing though, do make sure to test the hell out of it. I'm not sure how that would work from a stability issue. Again, as I, as I said before, you shove this into the soil, it takes a while before you start to get a good reading. So if you turn power on onto the sensor and you turn power off to the sensor, one of my questions would be is how long would it take before you start getting a stable reading from it? So these are the different Different types of things to think about. But one of the things to also realize at the end of the day, again, folks talk about these being toys and they're almost disposable, but they're also insanely inexpensive. Again, all this is is a little board with uh, some foil on it and a connector. I think I bought, I think I bought five of the whole modules. Like, I think they may cost a dollar a piece. So it is one of those things to be thinking about. It's like, well, if they die every year, <laughs> if it takes a year to kill one of these things, let's say it takes a year to kill one of these, that's a dollar a year. Is it worth a dollar a year in order to uh, to keep your plants watered? That it just may be one of those things to think about and go, well, it's disposable. Yes, it will die. Yes, it will corrode every year. But for a dollar, maybe two dollars a year, that's something that I think is is a reasonable price. So these are all some of the things that you should be thinking about if you're going to use one of these analog uh, soil moisture sensors. So that's all there is to this particular class. Go out, grab your turkey baster. <laughs> shove one of these things in the soil and again the big thing is just just be careful how you use your to your, your turkey baster just make sure the water goes in the right location or you can run into all kinds of problems and we're not going to even go into if you squirt water directly on the arduino board don't do that <laughs> don't do that water and arduino boards generally do not mix if you have water around your arduino board just be very 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 careful with that, as always, I enjoy doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.